G'day IB Psychologist. If you are wanting to do the Wilcoxon Sign Ranks test for your IA, then I'm going to show you really quickly how simple it is to do with this online calculator. I really like this website, which I will put a link in the description. I think this is better than VASA stats. Uh, there are just a few... I think this is just simpler and there are a few pitfalls that you have to be careful of with VASA stats. So let's have a look. All right, so this is Wilcox and Steinrax test. Now just a reminder, check these requirements. Do you have matched data? That means you used repeated measures, right? Because the data is matched because it's the same person doing it twice or you used matched pairs. So you're doing this if you did a matched pairs design or repeated measures. And uh, the other requirement is that your data is at least ordinal. All right, so what that means is you can order your values from highest to lowest. So it's not it's it's anything other than nominal data, which means it's just put into categories. Quick example, Loftus and Palmer, did you see broken glass? Yes or no? That's nominal data, right? I can't rank yes or no from highest to lowest. I can only put it into categories. It's nominal. Whereas uh, if I said how fast were the cars going, now this is at least ordinal data because I can rank these from highest to lowest. In actual fact, that's ratio data. Uh, I have other videos explaining more about levels of measurement and lots about blog posts, but that's all. Uh, hopefully you know that you're doing the Wilcox and Signs signed ranks test and it's the right one for you. Right, let's have a look. Take me to the calculator. So I just have my two conditions here. Now this is repeated measures, right? So I need to make sure, this is matched data I should say, right? So repeated measures or matched pairs. I have to make sure that, let's say my first participant got a 12 in condition one, I have to make sure, let's say let's uh, let's say this was HM, right? F good old anonymity study. Let's say HM got a 12. I have to make sure in this treatment too that this is HM's other score in the second condition. I can't have this to be KF's score here and HM's score there, right? So I want to make sure I've got here 12 and then I've got 10, 8. I'm, I'm putting in really um, random numbers here, by the way, right? So I'm just showing you, you're going to, of course, put in your actual data. Uh, how many participants are we looking for in the IA? About 10 participants. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. One more. What should they get? Oh, this person wasn't concentrating. They only got a 4. Treatment 2. All right, let's see. Generally speaking, let's say they did a bit better. They were drinking their coffee. Alrighty, okay, so I've got my data sets here in treatment one, treatment two. Now I need to check my significance level. We are uh, operating at 0 0.05, okay, so we're looking, uh, that's our, our significance level or what we call our probability level, and then one or two tailed hypothesis. So do we have a one tailed or a two tailed test? In IB psychology, if you have a one tailed hypothesis, you do a one tailed test. If you have a two tailed hypothesis, you'll do a two tailed test. Check the link in the description to make sure that you are doing the right test here. But basically, if you are predicting the direction of the effect, it is one tailed. Nearly every IA I've ever marked is a one tailed. But don't take my word for it, do double check. And again, I'll put a link in the description to the video that shows how to double check that. And then all I do is calculate. Now remember what I'm calculating with the Wilcox and Sign Ranks test, I'm looking for the W value, which is the calculated value from this test, and ideally the P value. So let's see, I might have got those two things. So 0 0.5, one tailed. Now my W value is two, and it's gonna tell me that down here. Now in order to determine if my results are significant, my W value has to be equal to or less than the critical value. So my W value was two. Now my critical value for a, pop, uh, for a sample size of 10 is 10. Now the critical value is not always the same as the sample size. This is just a coincidence. But so I have a critical value of 10. W value is two. Two is less than 10. Therefore, that's one way I can tell that my results are significant. The other way to tell that my results are significant is that my p-value is less than 0 0.05. Right? It's 0 0.0046. So my results are quite significant. That's a very significant p-value. So there are these two statistics uh, tell me that my results are significant. So I fail to reject the null hypothesis. I accept the alternative hypothesis. I reject the null hypothesis. However you say it, it all ends up with the same conclusion that your results are statistically significant, or at least my results in this case are. What I would expect to see if this was my students' results is a few things I would expect to see. First of all, I would expect them to see uh, to state the W value, their sample size, the W value, the critical value, and how the W value relates to the critical value. That's how they got a 
conclusion of significance, and the p-value. I would expect to see that related to the probability value and how they get a statement of significance there. Again, I have another video where I explain how to interpret your results if you need more help. That's it. And then the other thing I would need to see, and this is important for all AAs, is I would need to see a screenshot that uh, takes into consideration all of these factors. So I want to see the data and the significance level, the one tail, two tailed, and the results down the bottom. So I would screenshot all of that and that will go in the appendices of the report. There we have it, the Wilcoxon sign ranks test. If you have any questions, please pop them in the comments. Otherwise, I hope that was helpful. Now, remember as well, the most important thing about doing inferential statistics is not that you can do it, but that you understand why you're doing them. And so I do urge you to, again, I'm not just plugging my own channel here, but I do, if you're not sure how to understand inferential statistics, do watch my other video on that. That being said as well, uh, teachers, if you're watching this, or you might want to mention to your teachers, I have a... IA teacher support pack, which I have some lessons in there that involve playing the T-Rex game, which I think are really helpful for showing students uh, how to understand the value and purpose of inferential statistics tests. That's in the unit plan that comes with the teacher support pack. All of those links are in the description and you can download the previews. Alrighty, I hope that was helpful.